Hello friends and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I am not dead quite yet and neither are you, which is something that I suppose we can both be grateful for. We had quite a relaxing episode last time, uh, that is until a giant toad showed up and ruined everybody's camping trip, and I suppose it will have to get dealt with in some type of way. There's no way that our boys can run off because the car seems to be tipped over, so they are in quite a pickle indeed. I guess we'll have to to see how they get out of this one. Let's go ahead, jump right into this story and see what we've got today. We've seen some weird things on the road. Part 11, written by user Roseblack2222, narrated by Brandon Dayton. Sometimes I wonder if us surviving our encounters was dumb luck or a miracle. On one hand, I imagine lucky people don't have to deal with what we did on a weekly basis. But on the other, if there was a god looking out for us, I would want to ask him two questions. The first would be, why he allows even half of the things that we've seen to exist at all? And the second would be, why we have to be the ones to deal with them? I'm not only talking about Carl, Nick, and I, either. I'm referring to everyone in my town, whose issues had been going on well before I was even born. Hell. They could have been occurring as far back as the town's founding, for all we know. We imagine it had to start after the town was built, because why the hell would people choose to settle in a place full of weird, dangerous things? But then again, Australia is a place that people choose to live for some reason, despite it being home to the most poisonous creatures on Earth, so... Uh, who knows, I guess. Speaking of poison... That toad looked ready to gobble us right up. It sized us up, licking its lips in anticipation. With the car overturned, our chances of escape seemed slim to none. Not to mention, I couldn't even run, really. I could only hop quickly. Too bad for me, it seemed to be set on consuming me first. I think it somehow knew that I couldn't get away as easily. Its tongue started stretching towards me, we reacted by firing our crossbows at it, causing it to cry out in pain. By doing this, we learned that its skin was venomous as well. Our arrows, which stuck into its belly, disintegrated almost instantly. Still, they had heard it, so that was at least some good news for us. What wasn't was the fact that it had now become pissed off. It let out a croaking roar and slammed against the ground. The impact of it caused my bones to rattle, rendering me temporarily paralyzed. With doubling vision and stars dancing in front of my eyes, I was almost helpless as the toad came closer. I can't see anything, I declared. What about you guys? No, Nick replied. I can't move either. We asked Carl if he was doing any better. He didn't respond and seemed busy trying to do something. I managed to shake away the stars in front of my vision, allowing myself view of the toad now towering over me. I still couldn't move, although this time I think it was more thanks to fear rather than the quake that the toad had caused. It resumed stretching out its tongue, which circled around but didn't yet touch me. I knew that once it did, the venom coating it would just begin burning through me. There wasn't really anything I could do though. That's why I say, thank goodness for Carl. As the toad was about to grab hold of me with its tongue, I saw a quick flash of orange fly past me, the brightness of which forced me to squint my eyes. The toad let out a roar of pain. I looked and saw an arrow, now on fire, sticking out from its tongue. Apparently, Carl had been making flame arrows. The one he fired was sticking out of the toad's tongue. The heat of the fire seemed to be counteracting the poison, preventing it from dissolving as our arrows did before. Try as it might to shake it free, it was unable to do so. Heads up, guys! Carl called out, tossing us some arrows that he had modified by wrapping and soaking in gasoline. Using these, we continued to fire at the toad. Hey, I think we're driving it back, Nick said hopefully. Indeed, that seemed to be the case. Our arrows were forcing it to retreat. I even managed to get one of its eyes. Bastard. <laughs> However, it did something that we didn't expect at all. 
It shook its body and tongue, sending saliva flying in our direction. Scared it would get on me, I raised my crossbow to shield myself. Fortunately for Carl and I, none of it got on us. Nick, on the other hand, was not so lucky. Fuck! He shrieked in pain. We looked to see a large portion of it now covering Nick's chest and stomach. Carl immediately rushed over to him. I checked on the toad to see it jumping away from us. When it was out of sight, I went over to Nick as well. Carl, using the blanket that he brought, tried to wipe the poison away. Pete, he's thrashing around too much. Help me hold him down. I held down his arms and Carl held down his legs. Shit, he looks bad. Do you think he'll be all right? I don't know. Let's try and do all we can for him right now. We just couldn't catch a break that night. First, we had to deal with that toad, which almost ate me. I shudder to think about what the inside of its stomach might have looked like. And now, Nick was suffering thanks to that abomination's venom. Is there anything we can do about the poison? We can try. From his pack, he got out a first aid kit, a thermos, and a plastic water bottle that he tossed beside me. What's all this for? Get him to bite down on it. Nick bit down on it so hard that it started leaking. Carl used his thermos to collect some of the poison off of Nick. Sorry, Nick. This is gonna hurt like hell, he told him, pulling out a bottle of rubbing alcohol. Even with the water bottle in his mouth, Nick's screams were loud enough to rattle my eardrums after Carl poured that alcohol on him. Despite our combined strength, we could hardly hold him in place. Finally, he calmed down a little, but he was breathing heavily. We need to get him to a hospital, I said. Is the car still turned on its side? Carl glanced up, looking past me. Unfortunately, it is. Damn it. Do you think those hunter's car might be nearby? Good thinking. I'll go check. You stay right here. Got it. Not like I can really go anywhere else. In spite of the fact that Carl was probably only gone for about 10 minutes, it felt like hours. Eventually, though, he drove up in a pickup truck. The driver's window was shattered, indicating to me that he probably did hotwire it. Help me gather our shit, he said, getting out of the truck. I used his pack to prop up Nick's head, and then we began gathering what we could. While I did all this, Carl was busy getting the car off its side. He did this by using a tow cable from the back of the pickup truck, and he hooked it from the truck's bumper to the car's. By driving, he did manage to pull the car back upright. After that, he put Nick in the passenger seat and helped me finish gathering our things. How far away do you think the nearest hospital is? I asked once we were back on the road. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not even sure taking him to one's the best idea. Why not? Well, for one, it's gonna cost a fortune and we're not even sure they can help. We have to at least try. I know that, but... That poison ain't from around here. To put it simply, if that toad could be considered demonic, we might need to approach it from that angle. So, what? You think we should, like, bathe him in holy water? We aren't even believers, so that might not work either. I think we might need to find someone who can help us. Someone out of the way. Like, a witch doctor type? Yeah, something like that. How's he doing? Not good, but doesn't seem to be getting worse either. That could change soon though, so we need to find someone, and fast. The next 10 or so minutes were only accompanied by Nick's pained rasps. To say that I thought Carl's idea would be a long shot was an understatement. I mean, where the hell would someone be who would happen to know a cure for the poison that was afflicting Nick? I was thinking that we'd have to try half a dozen faith healers or those nut jobs who try shit like healing crystals to cure cancer. All we could do then was hope that someone semi-legitimate could manage to help us. A gurgling noise drew our attention to Nick. What in the fuck? Carl asked hoarsely. What we were seeing rendered me unable to speak at first. Nick's body was slowly beginning to darken as if it were rotting and all of his features were bloating. Well, I was semi-right about how they managed to chase the toad off 
I guess it wasn't explosive necessarily, but Carl did manage to rig up some fire arrows and it sort of worked. <laughs> Except, yeah, Nick got caught in the crossfire a little bit, which that ain't good. It usually seems like OP is the one that catches the worst of these things, but I guess everybody gets a turn at some point, and I'm sorry, Nick, my boy, it's your turn this time. I don't think that a hospital would be able to deal with poison from a demonic frog, although I'm not sure that a faith healer would be able to offer that much more help anyways. Uh, but again, you do have to try, keeping your fingers crossed. Faith healer is cheaper than the hospital, at the very least. <laughs> Probably what, not what Nick wants to hear at that moment in time, but it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. I hope he pulls through. I really like Nick. I really like all our boys, but Nick is, is the scout, you know what I'm saying? He's got those elven eyes. What would they do without him? Hopefully we'll never have to find out. I hope that you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. I would massively appreciate that. Maybe share the video around. That's a pretty big brain play as well. Join us again tomorrow for another creepy pasta video. Keep yourself safe out there. Don't lick toads. And also don't let toads lick you, as it turns out. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. And until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,